All right, this Saturday, October 23rd, two shows, Foxwoods in Connecticut, both almost sold out. Get tickets October 29th, Durham, North Carolina with the Babe, Sal Volcano co-headlining with me and Sally Babe. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. November 5th and 6th, Salt Lake City, Utah. Then we got November 21st, the Wilbur in Boston, November 18th to the 20th, Laugh Boston sold out. So we added two shows at the Wilbur. It's a Sunday, November 21st. Then uh, December 5th and 6th, or 4th and 5th, December 4th and 5th, Phoenix, Arizona, December 17th and 18th, we have um, West Palm Beach, Florida, and then we have December 26th to the 31st, Babe Fest with me and Sal Volcano, we're coming to Texas, we're coming to Ohio, we're coming to Missouri, get tickets, and then January 29th at the Borgata. Uh, in Atlantic City, two shows, first show almost sold out, second show was added, chrisdcomedy.com, and we got Big, big news coming from New York. Save the date, February 5th. Announcing soon, ChristyComedy.com. Anything to say, baby? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Christy Chaos. Today, we are back in the sunroom because the basement has a moldy dog smell. And we I'm pretty sure it's black mold, which is cancerous. Um, and Staten Island is a cancer dump that I live on. And I got to be honest with you, you know, people that say that Staten Island's a dump, you can suck my ass warts because it's one of, it's the most beautiful borough. It actually was George Washington's favorite borough, okay? So fuck you. Because a lot of people are like, oh, Staten Island, why'd you move out there? What, you know, somebody from the comedy cellar was like, what do you have, an above ground pool? It's like, no, I got a five and a half foot in ground pool that's broken. That's got cracked in the cement, but it's still in ground, scumbag. With that, my first guest, <laughs> <laughs> my, my first guest is, first of all, a near dear friend for, I want to say, I started comedy 2009-ish, 2010. I want to say a, a le- 11 years, 12 years a slave friend, Ricky Velez. Oh Ricky Velez, one of <laughs> the funniest greatest i mean just a guy who's been there with me with each we've been there with each other since day one we both um had the same manager oh 10 boy. years ago <laughs> that used to jerk off to us while we slept on the couch Dude, after prom show i saw him at dumbo house the other <laughs> oh my, day. You saw him at dumbo i house? swear to god give me a membership <laughs> i'm going back there ricky velez who's got his hbo special baby coming out October 23rd, a couple of days from now. A couple of days. HBO special, October 23rd. Ricky Velez, everybody. Thank you for having me, And what's the name of the special? Here's Everything. Here's Everything, and he's butt naked on the cover. And it made me feel really fat because... When I looked no, at you, that's not what it was supposed to do. No, because when I looked Poor at you, because when I looked at you, I said he looks tasty. I'd like to throw him on a baguette and eat him with some ketchup. Um, dude, I just wanted to get naked in front of HBO execs. Dude, honestly, <laughs> just being like, if they're paying me this much, I should take off my clothes. No, good for you because I feel like you know, there, you know, there's you know, you, I've never seen cover art like that. That's where it actually started with me and my older brother. Like, I was like, I have to do something that gets attention. And did you ever see Kevin Hart's book? No. So Kevin Hart did a book, and on the front of the book, it's him with a bunch of puppies. And someone once asked him, they're like, why'd you put puppies? And he's like, because people will look at puppies. Otherwise, I'm just a guy on a book. And I was like, that's great. And now it's changed, and everybody's naked. And it's like either that or OnlyFans. So it's just like... Yeah, it's like I'm the only fans of HBO. Dude, you are. And, and I think, and it's awesome because a lot of people right now are talking, at least like in the comedy circle, a lot of people are talking about like, yo, Ricky's cover photo, Ricky's cover photo, which is like, that's amazing because the special hasn't even come out yet and people are already talking about it. But it's fucked up, dude, because I like, I keep getting like messages from Instagram being like, this is inappropriate. They and took it like, down? They, they, they stopped putting me in certain algorithms. Wow. Which is very interesting, and That's like, annoying, and I man. noticed it yesterday because the like the numbers bumped high because I did Seth Meyers yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's right, on sick. the couch, Seth Meyers on the couch, yes, no stand up on the couch with Seth Meyers, nicest guy I've, I've ever nicest worked guy, with. Yeah. He's such a sweetheart, really liked it. Um, but yeah, like it was interesting yesterday. I saw the numbers jump back up again, like it wasn't a problem, yeah. and I was wondering if it was just because it was on yeah, Seth. Yeah, this whole uh, it probably was Seth. Seth <laughs> is the nicest guy of all time. When I did stand up on the Seth Meyers show, 
Jasmine, a.k.a. Vinny, we call her on the show, was nine months pregnant with Delilah, who's six now. And Seth was so kind to her. He was like, you know, talking to the baby. He was like, your daddy's going to do comedy. Oh, like, that's so Just the sick. nicest just, guy. Dude, Shout out Seth Meyers. Came into my green room yesterday and we just sat and talked about yeah. our kids for, Great. it was awesome. He's a I really love, sweet guy and, and just made it easy. Yeah. There was no part of it that felt uncomfortable at all. And he didn't ask like the basic questions that everybody asks. He's got his own, he knows comedians. Yeah. And then it's just awesome because like, I was like, do I wear a suit? And then I, he no. walked in wearing a flannel no. and I was like, this is my guy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> this is my Seth guy. Does, I like that Seth Myers doesn't wear a suit. I like that he's kind of one of the ones who say, you know what? I'm going to be who I am. I kind of like it. Now, let me just clarify something real quick. You're Ricky Velez, oh, fucking goosehead insurance. Ricky what? Velez, you are, you are half Puerto Rican. Half Puerto Rican, half Irish. Hey, okay, thank God, because we had last week on the podcast, we had Joe Santagato on the show, who I thought was half Puerto Rican, but then he said, no, I'm fully white, I'm Italian and Irish, so that's why, just in case you weren't, because uh, people have been yelling at us on the podcast, we don't have much, enough diversity. Meanwhile, I've had Miss Pat on. We your talked fan about base is dying for diversity? I was like, <laughs> what the heck? I was like, one, of, one of my once in a while co-hosts is T.T. Jerry, a Puerto Rican transgender person. I was like, but, so I was like, I want to just make sure Ricky is... Yes, I am a half Puerto Rican. My you, father was a full Puerto Rican, full Puerto Rican from the Bronx, where they're really from. Right. So yeah. that. So, but that's <laughs> why, just in case you weren't, I want to at least have the Puerto Rico jacket on to shout out Puerto Rico. <laughs> but I, I was saying, oh, at least if you tell me you're half Puerto that Rican, that was TZ's or was that yours? So what happened was, is I, <laughs> what happened was, is I. First of all, this is a double XL, so Daddy's got to stop eating. Um, um, so, so. A package came to the door about two weeks ago, and I opened it, and it was just a jacket that said Puerto Rico. And I assumed that it was for me, not realizing that there's- Staten Island, only Dasani water. A hundred percent. Only Dasani water on this island. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's bottled here, yeah. too. Well, Dasani water, the only <laughs> the only company that came out to publicly support Trump. Uh, <laughs> so we support you. Oh <laughs> so- so, yeah, dude, uh, there's all Puerto Ricans in the house. And I was like, oh, this is my Puerto Rico jacket. And then when I put it on, Jasmine was like, that was for my brother. She was like, "Why? you're a white guy. Why would you think a jacket that says Puerto Rico is for you? She's like, I was going to send it to my brother for his birthday, but now your armpit sweat is in it. So I got him a Puerto Rico. Instead, I, instead of a Puerto Rico jacket, I got him Puerto Rico boxing shorts, and I sent them to his house. When you go to her family's like stuff, are they just all decked in Puerto Rico stuff? No, when I go to her family's house, they're all decked in my clothes because <laughs> I... <laughs> just still wearing young and reckless shit? Yeah, dude, yeah, young and reckless. Yeah, dude, I used to wear that all the time. Young and reckless stuff, all my merch because Guy I code shit yeah, literally I'll put stuff in a bag like to take to the Salvation Army and then Vinny's mom Abuelita will come over and just be like where, where are you sending that I'm like I was going to see the Salvation Army she goes no, no no I'm going to give it to the kids and then she'll just drop off a bag at her sister's house and all the Puerto Ricans <laughs> will take my clothes I'll look at birthday pictures family photos from them in Florida with them just wearing Anxiety Tuesday stuff <laughs> and things that I forgot about dude you know what pisses me off the most when you give clothes to a family member and then they get into a fight with you yeah. and then they're cursing you out in your own fucking clothes. In my own wardrobe. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Dude, by the way, you showed up today in that jacket, which is beautiful, by the way, and you said that kids were roasting you and somebody said you were well, dressed I, like... Well, I took the Staten Island Ferry here. Hilarious. Which I love the ferry. The ferry is the relaxing. Best. It yes. is relaxing. Yes. But these kids, like, they're a group of them and they were like this woman was screaming about God on the ferry walking back and forth and they kept shushing her so every time she would say something she, they would go shh and then she would just look around <laughs> <for them. laughs> finally they, they they were coming up past me and they go look at this motherfucker dressed like the ferry <laughs> <laughs> dude uh, kids 15 16 year old kids can just rip you apart cause you can't really say anything cause then you're molesting them like you know what I mean <laughs> like what am I gonna say back that w they can't eventually say he molested me with his words. Well, that, now, my my thing now because I live by uh, I live by the Chelsea Projects. Ooh, that's and, fun. Uh, and then uh, there's a deli right there. I walked into not too long ago, and it's like I was getting roasted in there. And I just was like, I make more than all your parents. Yeah, like, I, like, yeah, yeah. 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 I make more than I, all your parents. Have you guys never seen an adult beat the shit out of a random kid? Have I, you? Yeah, you that's have some real queens. He's from shit. Whitestone, Queen. Like he's oh, trash yeah. queens. One of a. Uh, Dude, I love Whitestone. One Cracked of my out, dude, though. amazing place. 
But uh, one of my favorite fights I ever saw was this kid. I've told this on a podcast before, but this kid I grew up with, I'll just say his first name, Max. And Max had an anger problem. He used to have to wear rubber bands around his wrist. Okay. And he'd snap him when he got too angry. And we were at a, a we, were at the, we were at the kegs over in Douglaston Manor. Oh, my God. Yeah, they used yeah. to go be underneath the, yeah. the, the highways. Those, yeah, 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 yeah. St. Francis Prep and all yeah. those schools would go there. And we're there, and this kid starts a fight with Max. Max beats the living shit out of him. Next thing you know, kid comes back with his dad. The dad knocks the hat off of Max's head, and then Max beat up his dad. Wow, <laughs> yes. It was one of the That's coolest. That's exactly what I witnessed with different people. Dude, it's the oh, coolest. Maybe it's the, the same coolest. party. No, 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 because the, the father actually won the fight, and the kid's braces came through his face. Ooh, Ooh through his upper lip. No, 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 no. Yeah. Max didn't have a lot of teeth. <laughs> what, is, what is Max up to now? Um, I don't know. Actually, I did He's see- He's a producer for I Netflix. Did, <laughs> I did see him at a <laughs> wedding recently, and he seems like he got it together, but he still has ri- rubber bands on his wrist. Oh so it's like, yeah. <laughs> Wait, did, we, uh, did we go to like any parties together and just not know? That happened with me and Matt Pavage when we realized that, like, because me and him were the same grade, and then we realized that we ended up being, like... I'm 29. I don't know if we... I'm 32, bro, so we probably did. Probably. I don't know. I just went to Douglasson a lot and drank on the golf course. They had a keg out there. Yeah. Well, and yeah, well, the go- oh, yep, yep, the Douglaston yep. Golf Course. Douglaston Golf Course um, was a good one. Can you put up that North Korea um, fighting thing again? Look at this. This is how we have to train. Was this, was this not a joke? No, this is legitimate, real. This is what North Korea does <laughs> with no internet. Could you, dude? I gotta be honest with you, dude. The running I, through it, dude. If I was a U.S. soldier right now, I'd be like, listen, I can shoot you with an AK-47, but I do not want to fight you hand to hand. What does that mean? Dude, but what are, who is he fighting? What nation is just hitting you with sticks? Dude, there is not a <laughs> chance in hell they've given any of their members of the military the vaccine. No way. Dude. They're not vaccinated. I saw somebody post something the other day about Kim, about how much better he's looked. Like, he's the only person that looks better after quarantine. Yeah. Like, he's the only one that's Yeah, him and Homeless Pimp have lost weight. (laughs) Homeless Pimp's on the Kim Jong-un diet. They're the the, the only ones still doing the push-up challenge that started at the beginning. Oh, my God. Do you remember that? Dude, quarantine. Dude. Do you feel like we're out of it? What do you feel? What do you honestly feel? I feel like I like being around vaccinated people. Okay. I mean, I'm number three, by the way. Number, th- you you got the booster already. I got a booster in me wow. already. Yeah, yeah. I know How'd that's not popular f- on this island. Uh, yeah, I know. How'd the booster feel? It was the only one that kind of made me feel sick, but I'm cool. I'm chilling. I'm here. Interesting. Yeah, and I feel good. And I, I mean, I think for the most part, we're doing good. But it's still just people just need to go get the vaccine. Right. Are you are you vaccinated? I can't wait to hear the fucking tweet. Add Ricky Velez your opinion. I got trashed last week for saying pro vaccine stuff. Do whatever oh, really? the fuck that- you guys want. I don't. Give I a am shit vaccinated. I am vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. You are. We all are. Yeah, we all are in the house now. Yeah, we had to. Yeah, I mean, in this because eventually it's to. like that's the thing. It's like listen. You know, business wise, yeah, I have no choice. There are plenty of people out there that can still. Get away with Business it. Business wise, and you're not smarter than a fucking scientist. Dude. I know that's true. That's I, true. I love that idea that I do my own research. You no, no, no. Did, Nobody's no, an didn't. expert. Nobody's an expert. I listen to Doctor Auchi Fauci. He's a little Italian woman <laughs> that he's he's, he's a little no. Nona that I love him. Dude. My Nona has never has never ever ever disrespected me. Oh, Chappelle. I mean this. I mean, but who cares at this point? Me and Pimp kind of feel like with the Dave Chappelle stuff. I love this. I'm going to just say publicly because I've never addressed it. I love Dave Chappelle's special. And I I love Dave Chappelle and I loved his special. It's like the the CEO of, of Netflix, Ted something, came out and just supported him. So it's like more people need to do that. Is big corporations just say, because the truth is, is it's such a small fraction of people that even cared about this. Really, it's a small... Yeah, and like this transgender lady who's freaking out at Netflix, it's like... Dave oh, Chappelle, this is the employee? Yeah, it's like he worked this out Amico? for 20 years. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Google Zach Amico. Stop it. Um, <laughs> Stop it. All right, next topic. Yeah. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm going to be... 
I'm gonna be living on the, I'm gonna be living on this island a month after this podcast dude, comes out. Listen, dude. we this will is... welcome you. Listen, dude, you can stay in the sunroom. Um, I um I, I see the thing is the thing is too with comedy and Ricky and I see it's interesting. I just honestly don't. I haven't seen the Dave Chappelle special, oh, so like I feel ignorant having an opinion right now. No, I get it. Um, um, this is interesting too, though. Kyrie Irving not playing. Yeah, they oh, with told the team him, until he's they told vaccinated. Him, they told him no to everything now, huh? That's interesting. So, so, so now the, here's the thing. Wasn't Here, he a flat earther? He is a flat earther still. No, I think he came out and, and he said, came out said he's not flat he earth. Fell into a hole and now he understands the world's ra- round. <laughs> My question is, and I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm being honest with this, and I, I'm not. I'm not advocating for this. This is the wrong thing to do, but. I mean, look, dude. If I know, if I know where they're selling fake vaccine cards, Kyrie has to know where they're fake vaccine cards. Why can't he just get a fake and give it to Adam Silver's drooly ass and just let just go play in the games? Like, because that's a fucking felony. It dude. is a felony, you but you're not going to catch that. Kyrie Irving. He can easily get a doctor to shoot the vaccine into a garbage can. You know what I mean? Uh, I and then he can play. I, I, I think it's a stance, and I think, uh, you know, dude, this all comes with ignorance. And, yeah. I, and I like, this. I feel, I, my wife said this to me recently, where it's Shout like, out your wife. we Ricky, have to, my wife. Great wife. Th- great, Ricky's got a you. great wife. Shout but out your wife. Ignorance is not evil, and people no. have to start understanding that, yeah. and I think we'll be in a better place. Because I think anybody can be ignorant towards anything. So, I don't know. Let me ask you this. Do you ever, do you ever go s- sit down and be like, I want to get a new tattoo, but then think, does Machine Gun Kelly have that tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Do you call him Dude, Machine Gun I mean, Kelly? <laughs> uh, mostly Coulson. Coulson's his first name. Yeah. Coulson's an actually pretty awesome first name. Dude, I saw Machine Gun Kelly in 2000. He's actually a really good guy, too. And Dude, really amazing. He, My kid is a huge fan. I'm a big fan. I, his last he album was so Kelly's. cool. I closed the special with one of his songs, too. Yeah, sick. I know. And, I was there. Uh, pardon? Is that the special you played at the end when you put the mic in the stand? Maybe? No, I don't think Did we he... had the music yet. We didn't okay. have the mu- music yet. You played yes. some song. Yes, yes. Some yes. song that I never heard, but I was like, I like this. So he's, um, he's we legend. went ahead he's and- He's a legend. He, we just like, me and him kicked it off the minute I saw him. We actually met on, uh, like, which was cool. We met on my turf. Got which, it. Which like, I was doing stand up in Denver and he came through and he was such a fan. Okay. So fun. So nice. I'm going to put a gun to your head right now. This is a yeah. Chrissy KS podcast. You ready to play? Let's play. We're playing Fuck, Mary Kill. Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly, Pete Davidson, Judd Apatow. <laughs> Judd Apatow, the director of his special, Machine Gun Kelly, his BFF, Pete Davidson, his other BFF. He, so, uh, Machine Gun Kelly's just the homie. He's always been so good to me. Um, fuck, marry, kill. I mean, damn. Dude, let me just, let me just say- That's a tough one. Judd, okay, I just want to say this. We know how Judd cool, feeds my ch- child, but he wears cargo shorts. So, Th- but that's you why can I love die Judd. for that though. You could get killed for that today if you have on cargo shorts. It's really cool just to see like Judd walk into like the nicest yeah. restaurants with cargos on. No Here's one can thing. pull that off the that, way he let, does. Let me let me just because here let me help you through this. So we got Judd Apatow. There's so there's so many reasons to fuck him. So many reasons to marry him, and that their cargo shorts is a reason to kill him. Pete Davidson is your best friend. He's he's amazing. We all love Pete. You obviously the obvious answer is to marry Pete. But if you want to play, no, the, I think the obvious answer is to marry Judd. But no uh, prenups. No prenups. Yeah, I need half of that. Let me get is, half of that. Because here's the thing with Pete. Here's the thing with Pete. Is 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 you is is you want to marry him, but if you want to just play the game and get away with stuff, you can marry him and then give him a slice of pizza and he'll die. I think That's the thing. Hit the kid's crumbs will that. flare up. I he's think, open about the crumbs. I think he's the fuck, man. I just want to get on his list. Oh, not, because his he, list is tough, dude. Well, oh, Put me dude, on Dude, could that. you imagine? <laughs> Literally, I... Uh, but he... Because that's the issue, too, with fucking Machine Gun Kelly and Pete. They have they're <laughs> cute kids, but bony asses. So you might want to fuck Judd Apatow. He has some meat on his bones. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? No, this true. has gone way too far. Very true. Um, no. Uh, Mary Judd, bang Pete, uh, kill Kells. Kill Kells. There it is, yeah, buddy. But at the same time, like he would totally beat the shit out of me. Ma- it's so fast. No, I will say Machine Gun Kelly, the only time I ever met him was ever in the room with him was 2013 or 14 when the VMAs or MTV Music Awards, one of them was in Brooklyn. 
and I saw Machine Gun Kelly, Charlemagne the God was in front of us because it was the guy code, girl code stuff. We were all sitting there. Charlemagne the God was in front of me, and they had some kind of radio beef. I have no idea what it's about. But I saw Machine Gun Kelly like in Charlemagne and Charlemagne's bodyguards' faces. Like, dude, yeah, you, he's you ready talk to get shit it. about my daughter. He said something about his he's daughter. He's one of the realest dudes. He was dudes like, I've you said something about my way. fucking daughter, man. Like, I don't give a fuck. And Machine Gun Kelly was like thin, dude. And this is like keto wasn't even out yet, so like <laughs> he was like medically thin. Like, you know what I mean? This wasn't CrossFit. He wasn't doing Barry's boot camp. This was nah, like, he's I, a, he's I a was real like, yo, one, Machine Gun Kelly. And I was like, I fucking respect the shit out of this kid. Dude, he just did a music video where he like, there's a fist fight in it. And he actually fist fought in it. Like, no, dude, he, like, set I it respect up. Machine Gun he Kelly. He set it up that he, he would walk out of a building and just scrap this dude. guy. It's nuts. Yeah. So, were there no lawyers on set? What? <laughs> that I, seems like machine, <laughs> dude, he works different. He's wow. amazing. Like, that kid's really, like, so he taking definitely, it. He popped off on Connor, then. That was real? I don't know what happened there. I actually saw him later that night, and we were hanging out in the best of spirits. Dude, so like, let me just I tell you what, what I love happened. about Ricky Velez, and get ready to pull this name up, because I'm sure, maybe the fans might know him, but I don't think so. But Ricky's crew, this is what I love about Ricky. He, he gives no fucks, because he hangs out on a daily basis with Pete Davidson, Machine Gun Kelly, and Google Danny Palmer. This, is, <laughs> <laughs> this, this kid, Danny Palmer Dude, comedy. He doesn't even pop up. Look, no look at this guy. The Danny Palmer show. This is just a 45-year-old. No, Google the one underneath. Which is That's him, my which, son right yeah, there. This is, the, this is his crew. Dude, it's Machine Gun I, Pete and this fucking guy. I have that picture uh, uh, signed in my living room on, on my mantle. Yeah. And people often come over and ask if he's dead. It's so fun, dude. Yeah, Danny it's Palmer. so incredible. Shout out Danny Palmer, who, by the way, you look at him and you're like, ah, oh, whatever. When he takes off his shirt, fucking jacked. 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 Oh my God, jacked. But the problem, the reason why he's jacked is he has OCD and that falls into his OCD is like working out. So okay. like he runs every day, the same thing, works out like, every like, day, same thing. And if he doesn't, it drives him insane. Like he's li like born borderline autistic like he's like i have to do this 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 this, this. or he snaps <laughs> yeah man he's just yeah. a kid from ohio he just thinks the lower east side is the coolest thing in the world you know what man you dude, guys let's party dude you want to party inside wanna history G &T? he loves gnt's gnt's baby G comedy inside info you know for the for the for the fans of the show <laughs> they 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 used to run ricky julio and danny and Who's the other kid? Benny D. Benny D. And then there was another kid, Jeff, who's got to be dead. Jeff. The kid who used to wear, who no, used to wear man, the face he's mask. He's alive. He got clean. He got clean? Yeah, Jeffrey dude, Katzman, man. Dude, That's my Jeffrey guy. Jeffrey Katzman. Shout out Jeffrey Katzman. There's no way anybody See thought he was going to survive. See if you can pull up a Jeffrey Katzman dude, Jeffrey photo. Jeffrey Katzman literally was Jeffrey living Katzman in tents comedy. before the pandemic. He was. So we used to do a show called Fat Baby. Fat Baby was the show. And yeah, there he is. There he is, dude. Best hair in the business, Jeffrey Katzman. <laughs> And we, he's a, he's a Russian Jew from Coney Island. He's, he, oh, wow, he's a Russian Jew. And he used to be our DJ, and our DJ was known for not talking, and he would wear yes. a mask. DJ his, No Face. DJ No DJ Face. DJ No Face. And then sooner or later, DJ No Face was like, I got to get in this comedy game. Yeah. And um, yeah, he was buck wild, bro. But uh, he he got he got caught up in the drugs for a minute, but he's back. Dude, Every I time so I see him, he's awesome. Yeah, he's I'm doing so great. I'm so happy to hear Jeffrey Katzman is is alive and well. Yeah, um, because he he was his energy was just great. I love uh, that a picture of Judah Freelanders down in the corner because that just might be his dad. Now that I look at it, yeah, <laughs> is Jeffrey Katzman related to Judah Freelander? We got the polls up. Go to patreoncom Comedy. Tell us what you think, um, dude. No, yeah, because there's so much there's so much comedy like history, like in New York. And what I, what I was saying before is I feel like you and I, we started in 2009-ish, 2010-ish. But we kind of ran in polar, like parallel to each other no, in a weird way. Parallel, opposite circles. But I don't you, we've really seen like the change in comedy. Like I feel like you start when we, like in just 11 years, you've seen things radically change. Radically. In just fucking 10 years, like things that, you know, jokes that even the wokest of the woke comedians were doing 10 years ago, would they be put in prison for today? Because you could just, when I first started, I feel like we we could we were saying anything and everything we well, wanted to. Well, I think to. that's why people attract towards like, like those New York, New York comedians, like born and raised New York comedians, because yeah. they're not speaking as a tourist. That Well, you're spe that's why I love your special, and I encourage everyone to go watch it on HBO, Thank you. is because we were there. I was live in the audience there watching you, and I was like, oh, Ricky's saying shit. 
that like I want to Ricky's saying shit that we're all thinking and Ricky's saying there's no filter there it's not like oh let me do a joke and be protective of this group you were like nope I'm just fucking slinging it <laughs> and I and I love that because it was because everything you said whether it be about race or religion or whatever was all like just jokes it was pure comedy it's like this is what you're supposed to be doing not everything's going to be PC why do I want to watch that well it's also coming from a place where it's like you know like Chris, you can attest to this too. It's like last summer when I was going back home and like I live in Manhattan now, it is a bubble. Like you really sit in a bubble. And then you go back to Queens Village where I'm from and I'm going down the block and I don't see a mask nowhere. No, I don't see like I'm seeing more Trump stuff than I am seeing. And I'm like, oh, it's not like this. Yeah, dude. But at the same time, like it was, it's, 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 I go back to when I do stand up and I go back to what makes my friends belly laugh. Yeah. And I try to bring that to stage. Yeah, Cause you got the type of comedy. I don't know when I listen to your set, I can't, I don't know what side of the fence you're on. You're just right down the middle, which I love. At the which o- pissed me off the other day, bro, because somebody came up to me and I, I'm a liberal. I'm, I'm, I'm liberal. I, I stand on the left. Gay! Like, I'm sorry. I am. <laughs> I am dog. No, no, no. But it's just been, it's, it's just been who I was. But somebody said, it to me yesterday about the special who saw the special they're like you say a lot of things that would anger liberals and i'm oh, like no Yo, not at all. i go if i'm not even allowed to critique it yes how how are we gonna move forward like i'm not even allowed to critique dude i was up in the in the rafters you know like where like the you know comedians or like whatever oh, where dr fauci was where dr fauci yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. i was up <laughs> good there friend, good friend with <laughs> mad liberal people because you know most of the people in comedy business are extremely liberal and they were dying laughing at everything you said so it's like that see did somebody say that to you on twitter somebody said it to me in an interview i did yesterday Oh, yeah, because they're yeah, just that, trying to get a rise that, out of you. That, that got to sit there and get an early release of my special. He said that to me. And he said, you say a lot of things that piss off liberals. That could piss off liberals. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't well, see that. Well, the thing is, that. but here's the thing. As you said, a bubble. I, I think, uh, the, you know, what you said New York is, is bubble. That's a microcosm for the whole world is we're all living in our little bubble. So let's just say, which it is not at all. Well, let's just say you did piss off all the liberals. Okay, let's just say you did. And none of them watched it. You'd still have 150 plus million people watching and loving your special. So my point is, is like, it doesn't matter. You can piss off all of one group because what your comedy is, is coming. I always said this. You can't be funny and hateful. The minute as comedians, I see someone who's just like, there's no way Hitler was funny. You know what I mean? (laughs) It was impossible for him to be funny. You know, he had a funny look, but you know, like he looked like he, he was like a carrot top. Like yeah, a dude. Carrot top. Imagine. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, use props. People were his props. Finish that point, though. I like this point because because you can't be funny and hateful. Meaning, like you, when you come from like a really good joke, it can it can hit all different sides of the spectrum, but. It's coming from the place like in your heart where it's like, this is a joke that's like leading with love. Like everything that I say, that you say, that we all say, I think good comedians say that's funny is coming from a place of love for that group and understanding of that group, not a place of I hate that group. Even if it's a joke saying I hate blah, 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 blah. It's it, the well-crafted joke is coming from the place of love for them and making fun of it that way. As opposed to just being like, that's why John Gruden, whose emails just came out, that's why he got fired because he was just saying- oh, and- anything about this. Yeah, John Gruden, the head coach of the of the Las Vegas Raiders got fired last week um for emails that came to light that, you know, were pretty savage, but there was no joke. He's not a comedian like It's just hey. You know what I mean? Like I've said before, you know, like things, you know, when I'm like, "Oh, was you- this the guy that was partying like and no, cheating J- on his wife. John Gruden. He might have been cheating on his wife. Uh, the this only is th- how much I don't know about news, and that's why I'm like, listen, that, people. When I'm bringing great. up things politically, yeah, it's like just how I'm taking it in dude. as I live through my life. No, dude, I'm telling. And I you- also think me and you have a tougher problem with the idea of like our voices because everybody that moves to New York is. So a New York comedian. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have the perspective of growing up in this shit, feeling stuck in this. Yes. And like, like I wasn't going to be able to go to like most of the comics that come in. They, they, they're, they're, they're not New York. Yeah. It's appropriation. It's appropriation. 
Is that the correct? Well, I mean, he's saying, yeah, I, I get what you mean, Pimple. You're saying like a comic that comes in that's not from New York and is acting. And you know, then in three years, they're, oh, you're appropriating New York. New York. It's like, what? What's like, yeah, you're not from New York. And you know what I else? And I, name the guys from New York. They're beasts. Of course, dude. Yeah. Uh, fucking, you know. I was every, talking about the young guys coming up that's from it, like Eagle Wit oh, and yes. Andrew Thompson. Oh, a, 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 Andrew, a, Andre Thompson. Mm -hmm. That kid is awesome. And it's yeah. just like watching those guys come up. Those are the guys, like when I see, and I see do awesome shit, like when I see Che and Pete and all those guys do awesome shit, I'm like, oh, that's a win for us. Of course, man. Yeah. That's New York stuff. Because what I've always felt, and this is what, like I've, thought about this for years like even when they do like um even when uh you know when it's race stuff when they have to do the um the um uh affirmative action stuff i always was like when it comes to jokes it's like if i exclude a group if i say oh you, you, you i can make fun of everybody but not this group not trans people not asian people not this group not that group then what i'm basically saying is i don't want to make fun of them because i think they're weak but if i make fun of everybody then it's like i'm i am not i'm the definition of not being racist i'm treating everybody the same but but if you make fun of certain groups now you know, you get destroyed for it. And it's like, but is it, this is, is, is a problem. I, and this is my question. And I, once again, I don't know everything. I, I have not watched. You candy I have porn. A, Cause you I, are, I, it. <laughs> you got an orange jacket on. I don't know what you are. I don't know if you're a trendy school, conduct, <laughs> if you're a trendy school crossing guard or you just do, I got to put candy corn in your crotch. I'm sitting Indian style, native American style. I just think, what, where are we at? Oh, I just think it's like, I think a lot of people are making points to pick out yes. certain things to talk about now. And if it's not coming up organically, it feels forced, it yes. feels hateful, and it's gross. It's gross, dude. It's fucking gross. I literally, when it comes to comedy, because that's the only thing I would feel like you and I are actual experts at, because we do it day in and day out. It's the only thing I feel like I'm qualified to speak on that. You're qualified to speak on that. Comedy is like... If it's funny, it's funny. If it's not, it's not. But if it's not, I don't want you to lose your career over it. You're taking chances up there. That's yeah. all I think is like, I don't want anybody to lose their career or life because of a joke, even if it's about me. Because it's like, you're taking a swing. That's what we're trying to do, dude. Not everything's going to fucking work. You know, I think that canceling is good when it's against normal people. And I think suck. if the minute it's, it's physical, get them the fuck out. Yeah. That's how I feel about oh, it. Oh, sure, absolutely. Anything that's happening physically or anything like that, get them the fuck out. We don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with that. If any any type of physical stuff, that's no good. <laughs> um, but I, you know, listen. Unless you know, no, I'm kidding. Imagine I tried to go on a, just a 20 minute thing, just fired up about how when it's okay. I mean, I get hit. Vinny hits me. Um, we have proof. Um, I can't wait till the day you're in the paper face down in that pool from oh, her. <laughs> just fucking just murdered. Oh, just murdered with a f huge kitchen knife with Sasson at the end of it, right on my back. I don't even die from the wounds. I die from the Sasson. Um, the pimp is now up in the master. Dude, the homeless pimp legitimately <laughs> yeah. lives in my house. The I homeless, do. I do. Dude, I don't know That's if the homeless yeah. pimp is banging T.T. Jerry or Jasmine. I oh, love how the house I is working. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Our latest product, The Breeze, is a comforter made entirely from 100% eucalyptus fiber to regulate temperature and keep you cool and comfortable all night long. That's right. They use koala food to make comforters, and it's the best. All right. What is Buffy? Do you know what Buffy is, honey bunny? Okay, Buffy is the comforter that you threw up on last night, but it's so cute when you puke. Um, we've spent sleepless nights, I mean sleepless nights because of you, worrying about the impact in the bedding industry has on the environment. So we decided to change it because that's what keeps me up at night is to say, you know what? I'm sorry that we had to kill a bunch of humpback whales so I can sleep right at night, which makes, uh, all, and, and that's why I like Buffy because they don't kill any animals. What they do is make sustainable recycled materials and it makes them soft and it's, and it's soft on you and it's soft on the planet. No more night sweats. Isn't that true, baby? We, Daddy doesn't sweat at night anymore, right? Yeah, I don't sweat at night. Um, and and um, it's softer than cotton. The Breeze uh, uh, Buffy Comforter, the, the one of the comforters is called The Breeze and it regulates temperature. You have no more night sweats, 100% plant-based design for you vegan pussies. It's breathable and it is awesome, baby. We love Buffy. It's hypoallergenic, it's cruelty-free and it's earth-friendly. What more do you want? And it's softer than cotton and softer than my dick, which is really, really hard to be. 
So the breeze brings wellness to bed. Why not choose 100% plant-based bedding that's better for you and the earth? Come on, you homos. Let's do it. What is the uh, promo code? You will get a nice discount if you go to Buffy.co, not com or come, Buffy.co. That's Buffy.co and enter Chrissy Chaos. You get $20 off. Buffy.co, enter the code Chrissy Chaos, get $20 off. Yas. There's a specialist for just about everything, right? When my car breaks down, I go to a mechanic. When there's a problem with my shower, I call a plumber. When I don't want to have a baby, I take a plan B. Not for you, though. So when you get to your uneven, crooked teeth fixed, you see an orthodontist. They're the specialist, and that's what sets Candid, the invisible, comf- comfortable, and removable aligners above the rest. Let me tell you something. If your teeth are crooked... Candid is going to help you out. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. You can book an appointment at a Candid studio near you or do everything from the comfort and convenience of your own home. The average Candid treatment is just six months. It's not that long. She's not even six months old yet. And you'll start seeing results way before then. And it costs thousands less than traditional braces. And with your aligner treatment, you'll get Candid's teeth whitening for free. That's right. The teeth whitening that's acceptable for free. And we're going to give you a sweet discount right now. If you go to CandidCO.com slash chaos and use the code chaos, that's candidco.com slash chaos. Use the code chaos. Limited time offer for $15 starter kit. Candidco.com slash chaos. Code chaos. I love how the house is working. Like you guys are just pulling TVs out of places. Yeah, dude. And We're just making it all like, up. I want to watch it here. If I walk in, there's just a baby sleeping way too close to the door. Yeah, she's, way no, too close. Close. she's sleeping next to the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fireplace, dude. I do. How awesome is that? It is crazy. I have one now too. And it's like, that's like the level of like where you hit fireplace where you don't have yeah. to lie to your kid. Like, no, Santa comes through the front door. Yeah. Like a fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just our no. parents no. for years no, the being thing like, is li- we leave them a key. It's no. like, that's not how living, Santa living works. In this, living in this neighborhood, I sat my kids down right on this couch in the summer room. Day one, we moved in here. I said, listen, Tristan, Delilah little baby Violet who was two months old drinking a bottle. I said, I got, we, we've moved on up now. This is the real world. I want you to know right now, Santa Claus is not real. Bitcoin is. So you better get, you be, so you better get your fucking hands on a crypto account and start making some money here. Dude, See, my kid has a portfolio account. Uh, as portfolio, he should. Uh, stock portfolio. Forget now. about Happy How Holidays crazy and Santa. Get him an Ethromax. Yeah. Kids out here. With- <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. And, and, and see, that's why you and I are dads. By the way, you're, you're a dad, but you're more, you're a little bit younger. You're more of like a cool, hip dad. Where I say I'm borderline becoming like a loser, New Balance. I'm borderline, I'm becoming Danny Palmer. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm going to look like Danny Palmer any day now, but you're still cool and hip. So how do you do it? What, I just stay who I am, and now right. I have a kid. I've taken on more responsibilities, but you know it as like a comic. The minute you had your first kid, everything changes, and you <sighs> start making a lot more sense what you're doing, what you're spending your time on, what makes sense to go do, what doesn't. It's yep. like it's it's the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, and it's the thing Scared. I'm most prideful of. Do you want more kids? What are you not right now. No, no. you're going to wait. You know what? We had our first kid and then uh, he was a year and a half when pandemic happened. Maybe if that didn't happen, we'd possibly have more kids. But like, I want me and my wife to really enjoy this time that we have. Like the world's opening up. We're getting to go do some really cool stuff. Yeah. And I doubt she doesn't want to not drink for another year. Yeah. That, well, that's the thing. That's the thing with Jasmine. When she got randomly pregnant with Violet, she like, I remember the first month and a half, she was like, listen, I'm pregnant, but I'm going to drink. I was like, you can't drink. And she was like, what? I, yeah, what? she was like, she was what like, what do you mean? Because we were having so much fun. We were just partying, whatever. She's like, we've been drinking a bottle of wine a day. And now you just put a baby in me and I got to stop drinking. I was like, yes, what do you yeah, want? Yeah, that's how babies work. I was like, you got to just not Jesus drink. Jesus Christ. So she didn't drink, but then her OBGYN let her have like, I think a glass of wine a week. So at least, at least, which is okay. That's what happens when you move to Staten Island. It's yeah, just yeah. like, ah, oh, just one. And then we were all out in a house in LA and she wanted my weed edibles. Yeah, she was like, can I take an edible? I was like, Jess. Dude, no. you should not put this part out onto the internet. This is how, this <laughs> no, is how CPS shows up. No. Come on. My are you baby. kidding? No, dude, if CPS showed up, I'd get him right on the podcast. <laughs> I'd have him sit right down on the couch. I'd say, listen, get a microphone in their fucking face as you're taking my kids away. What's <laughs> going on? Private or public? Uh, private. Uh, well, Catholic. 
So they go to Catholic private. school. Yeah, I guess it's private. Yeah, they go to Catholic school out here, which is nice. Um, I I kind of think no, I got no beef with public, but I just you know I kind of was just like Catholic school at least now just on Staten Island just seems like public school. I just feel at any moment New York City public schools you went can to Catholic shut growing down. up. Oh, dude, Catholic Catholic school kindergarten through college. The first time I met a Jewish person was I was twenty three years old in graduate school. Shout out Miss Dana Strager, great person. That's what's really crazy about New York. It can be very segregated in that way. Yeah. Um, even though, like, Queens is the my, most diverse borough of all time, like, yeah, I didn't have Jewish people in my neighborhood. Which is wild. I had an uncle that was married into the family, but, like, that was the only, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never, I didn't know until I went to Frank Sinatra School of the Arts, and then that's when right. I, like, started meeting people Dude, from, I like, Bayside, that. Whitestone, and all around yeah. there. Yeah, uh, Ricky, Ricky is one of those guys, he's from a real tough-ass neighborhood in Queens, came up, you know, through the shit, and then went to performing arts school and survived. Yeah, that was he went fun. back to the neighborhood every day and was like, I'm, I'm literally, I have tap dancing shoes on, <laughs> and you will not steal my money. <laughs> Yeah. It was fun, man. It was uh, definitely itch. I used to have to wor- walk past like one of the worst schools in Queens, which is to which, get home. What uh, Queensbridge? No, I went to uh, Martin Van Buren. Oh shit! Yeah, that's yeah, a hood. yeah, 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 yeah. Good president. I Bad lived. School. I lived, uh, and I lived. There's a corner right there. There's a McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Popeyes, and Dunkin' Donuts all on one corner. Oof. So they would all conjugate at the top of my block, and I was robbed a few times coming home from that school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you haven't been robbed recently. No, thank God, knock on wood. But I mean, the city's hot right now. They're it like, is they, hot. yeah, a lot of people getting robbed. Now you have we, you know, because we have TT Jerry. We have an uncle. I have my uncle, yeah. T.T. T. T. Jerry, and we, I know we can't say his name, but can you talk about your family member who's similar to T.T. <laughs> Jerry? He's similar in the way. <laughs> He's got similar uh-huh. backstory, except he didn't cut his dick off. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, like, I was talking about this earlier. Like, it's so crazy now that, like, where we are and, like, do you do therapy? Oh, yeah, dude. Shout yeah. out BetterHelp.com. Great. Promo great, code great. chaos. I'm like, uh, you know, before I had my kid and during pandemic, I really jumped into it heavy. Good. And I thought it was great just to be able to like level out myself and to be the best version of me for my kid. And as I was doing it, like, you know, you will get into the stories in a second, but like I had addiction on both sides of my family. I had, I had, uh, I had alcoholism and I had, and then I also, there was numerous mental health issues. Right. And then like, everybody would be like, therapy, you're snitching on yourself. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, you're a rat to yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like most of these people that like probably just needed help, like, uh yeah i had an uncle that was i had two uncles one on each side my irish side and my spanish side that were just on one i had one uncle i hadn't seen since i was a kid because he would choke us he would choke you yeah so like like, for what just when he got mad at you yeah the one time that i remember it going down why he was mad was i was blowing bubbles in my shake from mcdonald's so it's all like yeah he got choked out for that he was my babysitter my parents didn't know oh my god yeah he told us he would kill my parents if he found out if they found out so me and my older brother like held on to that for a very long time and that's like stuff i needed to deal with as i got older that sits shit sits with you of course and then when you have kids all that stuff comes back up which was crazy did you have that like just memories of you like you see your kid at that age and then you remember those things um not well, really we, we i mean not getting out. choked out by my babysitter <laughs> <laughs> we figured out that just like your father the baby saved you from anxiety yes yep. yeah just like my father yeah my my i allegedly saved my father from you know what he says is it saved him from like his anxiety and his like gambling addiction and then my baby saved me from my crippling anxiety because it just when you have a child it just makes you think outside of yourself and you realize this world is not about you and it's going to keep going on with or without you so my obligation is to my children so that's just like I, I mean I think it did the same thing for me in a way because uh my mom passed away out of nowhere five right, years ago I remember that and it was just like for so long, I thought I was dying. I was making up diseases. I had this, that, and there. And once I had my kid, that and was that done. was like there was not. Uh, she wasn't sick at all. No, my mom was, just there one day, gone the next. Oh, Valentine's brutal. Day on Valentine. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Jesus. So like there's all that stuff like that came up in therapy. And then on top of it, just like really looking at these people, like I, I villainized them so hard. And then it was just like, oh, they needed just as much help as I did, and right. if not more. Right. And then like my uncle that me and you laugh about a lot, like yeah. he was just he was on one. Bro, he drove through a police barricade. <laughs> bro let's bring it back to your neighborhood yo he got out of jail out seven hours all right no i'm not uh, for coming from i love upstate. this guy i wish you could coming really from like upstate i wish you could come on the podcast no you don't bro <laughs> this house is too nice for him you can't bring him here no dude well we have you our own security do it on the lawn. we got tt jerry i don't need vivid security yeah. i have tt jerry's tits i would not be surprised if they knew each other uh, T. We can't say his name. No, we won't. We won't. We won't. We'll, 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 off air. We'll, Let's we'll, finish this story now. Go get how it. Much go, time go get did she, she spend a good amount of time in Rikers? T. T. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's oh, the queen, yeah. queen of Rikers. Oh, yeah. She's the Rikers there, there's queen. Hell of a chance. But I'll anyway, gets out of jail. He's been away for a long time. Out seven hours. Finds the guy that snitched on him. Left him naked with broken toes on the Throg's Neck Bridge. Naked? <laughs> Imagine back, that. You just got your toes broken back. one by one. Oh, you idiot. Dude. Butt naked with a shrinkage <laughs> and a broken pinky toe. Dude, not even the craziest. We've been, uh, I there's, love this there guy. was one time we were at a funeral and my cousin, I'm, I don't even know why I call him a cousin. I don't know his name. And, <laughs> but that is, yeah, and he's just wild. And we get to the funeral and, uh, like, he has a sister that's doing well. She was going to a good college. And next thing you know, my cousin, the male, walks in. And he has his whole squad with him. He, like, he squatted up to his mom's funeral. And he was like, yo, everybody out of the room. I'm rapping to my mom one last time. Oh. Wow. Ortiz Funeral Home, South Bronx. The one next, <laughs> the one next to the White Castle. And because every funeral we've ever been to there looks like it's sponsored by White Castle. Oh, yeah, because yeah. People are just eating in it. Yeah, dude. Like, it, dude, it's nuts. Yeah. How many, dude? So, anyway, we get there and he clears the room. Everybody out. And his boys come out the door and they're standing in front of it. And, uh, Next thing you know, his sister, I guess, like, went to, like, take a break because the funeral was, like, all day. She comes back in. She's like, why is everybody in the hallway? And somebody turned to them and was like, your brother wanted to rap to your mom one, one last time. And she goes, he's robbing the fucking body. <laughs> and then my uncle that we were just talking about just beat the shit out of every dude standing there. My dad turned to me and my brothers was like, get in the car. And we dipped. <laughs> He yeah. stole off the body. He was stealing off the body. So then my uncle that TT probably knows, like, he got everything back on that body. Wow. Yeah. Dude. That's not the only fight I've seen at a funeral. <laughs> oh, I think I know more. what movie you're selling. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like it was it was crazy growing up and like yeah. you know, it was like so often do I look back at things and I'm like, oh that wasn't normal. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't normal. Yeah. I had an uncle that used to go to jail on Fridays. That's sick. He told me about that. Weekends, you would only go to prison on the weekends. Isn't that Canadian? Because his his crimes weren't that bad. They were all like on him. Like he was just a drunk. So like he would just like DUIs and like he never like, like he, he would just get drunk and like fall asleep on the street and the cops would throw him in drunk tanks. And then finally they put the monitor on his leg for drinking and he wasn't yeah. able to do that right. So they were like, you got to check in on Fridays for now on. So he went to jail Friday and Saturday. He'd be released Sunday night, went to work on Monday. I fucking, I, if you're going to go, like if you gave me that option, if you said, listen, you can do a year in prison straight or five years only on the weekends, I would just go five on the weekends. <laughs> That's but what you, I do. You, you can't do no road gigs, man. That's yeah, a big... No, dude. I, listen, I, like, we, want to. Well, I was like, we got to sell out Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That's what we got to do. Dude, the you know, next guest is just people that have been released with Chris. <laughs> dude, you know what's crazy, too? Because you were in the movie The King of Staten Island. Shout dude, out to King of Staten Island. This is where I'm famous. King of... This is the exactly, only place dude. I get recognized. Ricky is the king I of... I get stopped here a lot. It's my favorite. King of Staten Island. But it's so funny because I really enjoyed the movie and then... Uh, this is a spoiler of the movie, but it's been out long enough where it's like you should have seen the movie already, you dumbass. But but movie the, the in the movie at one point at the end of the movie you get shot and then they <laughs> never say what happens to you at the end of the movie. Me and Jeff I end up watching, in jail. I end up in jail. No, but me and Jeff, really? Yeah. Remember, Pete comes and sees me, and I have a yeah. The, he's in jail. I'm but, in jail at the end. But there's no payoff for his character. Your character was. Carrying the movie for a while. Oh, thank dude. you so much. <laughs> yeah. It was for, dude. 
Judge just let me go off on that. But yeah, getting shot was crazy, dude. Yeah, it's like a whole process to get shot in a movie. Well, you basically have firecrackers on you that are shooting the opposite way. Oh. So after like the first one, I was like, oh, that didn't hurt. That's not bad. After the second, third one, I was like, my shoulder kind of hurts. Wow. <laughs> like my shoulder. Well, you have like burns and stuff on you? Little not burn. burns. No, yeah. it's, dude, it's, they make sure. That, those things are so insured, those yeah. movies. How long does it take to film a scene of you getting shot? Like, was that an all night uh, scene? That scene was a three or four day night shoot. Three or four days? Yeah, we did a pharmacy right here in, uh, right here in uh, Staten Island. Staten Island. Such a good scene so that, that was, was, that, that was in my shoot. opinion the whole best scene of the movie and also that movie felt like to me from the outside the behind the scenes felt like summer camp oh like you guys dude it just... was exactly what it was yeah, it was yeah, so yeah. fun judd got all of our friends in there we got people jobs that didn't deserve them but it's just <laughs> like just like really just like turning around and my, our friends are pas all of a sudden like That's it was awesome. just such a good judge judd was, Apatow seems like a really actually nice guy i've never i've actually met him a couple of times at the comedy so the cellar. best the best thing he does is he makes people so comfortable to be creative yeah and you never feel dumb you never feel like you're over like you're over you're not doing enough or he will let you know if you're not but like at the same time like good work gets done there because of just Dude, what he does and i really think like i have to go to like get help i just said i've only met judd aptal a couple of times i would did a scene in one of his movies and i forgot <laughs> i was in the movie in train, train wreck, tra tra train train wreck. wreck. Yeah, yeah. and it got and it got I, my part got cut but still I was in trainer. I know, Crashing, the show Crashing, my friends would abuse me because every comic in New York City got in that show Crashing on HBO, Judd Apatow and Pete Holmes' show. And Mo Ammer, shout out Mo Ammer, was sleeping on my couch. And I remember being like, weeks were going by and my friends were like, are you ever going to get in the show Crashing? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then one day, Mo Ammer was sleeping on my couch and he woke up at 7 a.m. and I was up to go get the baby. And I was like, what are you, what are you up so early? He goes, oh, I'm getting this, I'm filming Crashing today. I was like, even the guy sleeping on my fucking couch <laughs> is in Crashing and I'm not Dude, in it. Best story about that for me was, yeah. I, I was in Crashing for legitimately one second. Yeah. No joke. I like sat in a trailer all day. They were like, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then I showed up and then I got to like say one line to Pete Holmes. And then he turned to me and he went, uh, I like your shirt. And that was it. And then they cut away my sentence and the whole thing was Pete Holmes walking past me going, I like your shirt. And I was so upset about it. And now my writing partner. You're just sitting there like that? Like, look my, at my shirt. <laughs> my writing partner, uh, Judah Miller. I don't know Judah uh, Miller. He, like, ran that show, but I always give him shit yeah. for doing that to me. Shout now. out Judah Miller. Now, Judah Miller's incredible. Listen, Overland, it's a family-owned American heritage brand, and you got two American citizens talking right now. Are you an American citizen, baby, or are you a Russian spy? No comments. You could be a spy. What I'm telling you, Overland, it's one of those things where they initially sent me a care package and I was like, this feels comfortable. This looks nice. And now I genuinely can't stop going on the Overland website and buying stuff because they use expert craftsmanship to pair the highest quality merino sheepskin, which is naturally moisture wicking, temperature regulating, and antimicrobial. That's very important these days. With supportive memory foam midsoles in order to make slippers that feel better and wear better for longer. I was falling down my stairs left and right because I would run down the stairs with socks on or sweaty feet. And then I said, I need my need to get myself a house slipper so i got myself a house shoe and now i don't fall anymore and i got my house shoes from overland i'm telling you overland it's got the best slippy whippies i've ever put my disgusting stinky feet into they even got little slippy whippies for her Overland offers a 100% satisfaction guarantee and their commitment to customer service is, except, is exceptional and that's true. If you want a pair of well-made, comfier than you could imagine slippers, these are the ones to get. So don't wait another day to slip into something way more comfortable. Get the best, highest quality sheepskin slippers on the market at overland.com slash chaos. When you put in that promo code, you'll get free shipping and free returns. And I recommend you go today because these slippers are so beloved that they've been known to sell out and that is true. That's overland.com slash chaos overland.com slash chaos let me see your feet absolutely do you like bush i know i don't do you like bush 
No way. So Manscaped is what you need to do. Manscaped is here to upgrade your grooming experience. Go from a bite-sized candy bar to a king-sized candy bar and join the 2 million men worldwide by going to manscaped.com slash chaos for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, do you? Dude, there was this one time where I was trimming my nutsack and I started to bleed because I was using a freaking Mach 3 razor that was like FDA government approved and I shredded my scrotum. But now using Manscaped, it doesn't hurt anymore. Now daddy's balls are very, very smooth, just like the top of your head. I got smooth balls like your ass. And the finely tuned trimmers feature a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is easily the greatest ball hair trimmer on the planet. My friend James Debo, shout out Lil Debo, he trims his balls with it. He also trims his head with it, which is stupid because his head looks like a testicle. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0. The Manscaped boxers and the shed travel bag, which I love the shed travel bag because it makes it so convenient for how much me and Pimp travel. And dude, and you know, Pimp's nuts are a fucking <laughs> disaster. And even he uses Manscaped and, and they look good in his corduroys. You can't even see his bush coming out of his corduroys anymore. Love it, love it. They have a bunch of other life-changing products on their website, so be sure to check it out. Right now, you're going to get a sweet discount if you go to manscaped.com slash chaos. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash chaos. Say trick-or-treat to your beautiful new Halloweeny with Manscaped. And next time you go trick-or-treating, why don't you pull out your fucking smooth cock? <laughs> I have a question to go back to the, you were surrounded by addiction. Yeah. And yet you have such um, cool friends who I always think of. There must be addiction there. Is it hard to balance like your past with having A-list friends? I don't even know if it's really like, like as much as like these people are my friends, like these people have kids too. These people have their own business. So right. like we just like to laugh and have a good time together. So that stuff that goes on, like I don't really like... It's not my job, but at the same time, I love them and I always just want them to be great. So you never feel influenced. Just oh no, I'm my own man. Okay. Like I've decided to make all those moves I've ever done. But I always strictly smoke weed and uh, do shrooms. Like that's it. That's not love bad, it. dude. Yeah. Love it. Love I feel it. comfortable there. I'm Listen. gonna go grab TT. I was gonna say, well, no, I think TT's coming because I was gonna uh, say, speaking of. Um, Smoking weed and doing shrooms. Let's bring in this crackhead. Um, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> TT, come on, baby. Where is she? You're out. Talking to his therapist. I don't know if you realize that. Can you say Aww. that into the mic, please? This is Vinny. Vinny speaking in for TT. He's talking to his therapist right now. Well, is so he using BetterHelp? Is he using BetterHelp.com promo code chaos for ten percent off his I don't first know. month? Did you give him the code? Yeah, I gave him the code, but TT doesn't have a computer. That's the problem. <laughs> what is my? What are my kids doing? Bothering me, Vinny. <laughs> You're missing a really good podcast with Ricky. You're not listening. I hear it. Oh, I'm That's sorry. Funny. Thank you're you. Listening to I it, and it's, it. And it's great. You're like being a full mom, and you're giving her shit, dude. Yeah. Like, what's, I'm sorry to curse in front of you. No, sweetheart. they don't care. This is our daily life. So. Oh, okay. This is what it is. You, you don't, don't listen, listen to things. things? That's, oh, look, that's, TT's coming into. There's. Oh, hey, dude, dude. how are you? This <laughs> is. <laughs> Hey, come on. Hi, how are you? This you want to come on therapy on the show? This is against every nice HIPAA TT. rule that exists. Dude, I can't wait till one of my neighbors <laughs> just shoots TT because they're like, what is, who is walking on his property? <laughs> oh, man. This yeah. is unbelievable. I'm kind of busy. All right. I'm, yeah, I'm busy too. I have to do, I, I have to do, well, I have to do two more podcasts because your mom wanted new windows. <laughs> What do you mean? I got 19 um, windows. Shout out Renewal by Anderson, you fucking crooks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby, we're almost done. I'm almost done with Ricky. I know you want to go outside, but you can't go out there. Titi's out there, and I don't know what she's doing. Oh, good. That's good. Nice. Absolutely. We're going to bed. Kids are going to bed, everyone. <laughs> dude, yeah. this, whatever is happening here. This is the Chrissy Chaos is Show. unbelievable, dude. This is why the pot, they were like, you know, they were trying to convince us to get a studio. And me and Pimp were like, absolutely no not. Way. We do it from hell or we <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> well, I do it with my fucking banana socks on. That's what it is. I can't believe TT just walked. Did you get her on that camera? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't point at her. Dude, that great. was just unbelievable. Yeah, I don't want to get another cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. Last so last time TT was on, we literally and we didn't even think about this. this is how dumb we are. We didn't even <laughs> TT. She called her parole officer. TT's parole officer. I listened. Called her 
on live called on you. the show called you called you me, and i put the whole conversation <laughs> on the podcast and we got i'm not lying like a hundred messages from people who, who, who emailed uh, the pod and then a call from two actual lawyers that were like this is highly legal and tt can get thrown back in prison for this take it down so we took it down. I wouldn't have taken it down had they said it would come, it would fall on TT. Yeah. So because it was TT would get in trouble, I took it down. Uh, is there is the PO cool? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, she's wow. Pretty- <laughs> well, listen, listen. She's cool. She's cool. I think if TT can get another four to six months, like no mistakes, I think she's off. And then listen, listen to me. Listen. <laughs> Listen to me right is now. Is that when the tour is going down? When TT gets <laughs> off parole, I'm come. I'm going international, and I'm bringing TT with me. Okay? Does she have a vaccine card? No. Does she need one? No. She's a TT. You she, should do like a "I will show you the world" like that, remix. That's what we're as, doing. Oh, no. As her as Aladdin. We're filming something called TT's Bucket List. Yeah, oh, this that's is what great. we do on pay at pay. Well, on you the did Patreon. the helicopter, right? And, on the and yeah, Pride went, parade and her first plane ride. And her first plane ride, and we put wow. all that footage. TT's Bucket List can be found only at patreoncom comedy. That's where you got to go, dude. There's a whole TV show on our Patreon. Like it's a literal whole TV show. We'll see. Um, but yeah, dude, TT Jerry and and. And, and your family member, I, I they are so. See, the thing is, I've only met TT. TT's one of those people. She's she's only come into our life about a year ago. But don't you feel like you've known her forever? Yeah, it's like literally, literally our best friend. I mean, she's in the in my driveway right now, just doing therapy out loud. <laughs> the, all the neighbors can hear what the therapist is saying and what she's saying back to the therapist. Like she's having a full in public therapy session on my block. She's the best. I bought her, me and her, tickets to a drag brunch. Like, we're just going to go get... Great. Yeah, lit up. No, TT Jerry, I'm doing a humongous show in New York. Is she allowed to get lit up? I am. No, she can't. TT can't. can't. Listen, all I want you to know right now is save the date, February 5th. We haven't put it on sale yet. It's going to come on sale in about two weeks. Save the date, New York City, February 5th. We got a big one coming. I Show? It's a big show, big stand-up show. Daddy's got a big one, February 5th in New York City. TT will be there. and then You should find her a Valentine's Day date. Ooh, that, at the show. You want to go on a date with TT the following weekend? <laughs> you better be at the show, and I'm t- I'll tell you where it is in about two weeks. Who is co- Emilio's calling me? Speaking of the show, Emilio. Do you know Emilio? Do you like Emilio? I love Emilio. Okay, Do here we go. Emilio. Emilio, what's up, baby? <laughs> I'm on the podcast right now with the great Ricky Velez. Hey, Ricky Ricardo. I texted Ricky earlier today. After you didn't tell me about that. <laughs> no. um, what's going on? Is there business to talk about? He smelled good through the TV. He did. He looked good. And 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 the thing is, and and Ricky's one of those guys. Like I I I like him skinny. Like I even want him to go skinnier. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't even imagine a fat Ricky. Dude, could you imagine fat Ricky? That's how you know the world's over. If Ricky got fat, then it's over. Dude, that's what always bums me out, and he'll probably this is probably not the place to say it, but about Bobby Kelly because people always <laughs> tell yeah. me I look like a young Bobby Kelly, and I'm like, oh, well, thanks. yeah, they used to call him Puerto Rican Bobby back in the day. All right, Emilio, it's it's business. I got to call you back then. Uh, you call me later, Ricky. I love you. I love you too, Emilio. Is it urgent or how urgent is it? Urgent. Ah, I wish it was urgent. <laughs> I love urgent business. <laughs> Like, hey, your career's over. Here's why. Right, I'll call. I'll call you. In, I'll call you in 25 minutes, or I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish the pot and then have an Entenmann's cake. <laughs> yeah, start sending them to me. All right, I'll see you later. Dude, I have a gym in my garage. We, I want to give Ricky a tour of the fucking house. After I want to see the house when we're done. Yeah, Vinny, you're gets gonna try to get me out on this island. I'm not Dude, doing it. What? Would this it ta- island's so ridiculous. And so, I was walking through the city uh, during the summer, and this guy comes up to me and goes, "Staten Island," and I was like, "Thanks, man." Yeah. And he goes, "I live there too." I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm from Queens." He goes, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> I kept walking. It's like, do you think like the Star Wars people live on stars? You do fucking you, moron. Do, so you would never in a million years come live on this borough, Staten Island. Um, in a million years, I don't know, man. I it's just, a great place to raise a family. I I agree with that, but I think if I were to move out of Manhattan, I would want to also be out of the cult. 
got it. So Florida, something like that. Something. Florida. Okay, down south. Yeah. Now, how, to, how is it with the kid with the play dates and interacting with other parents? Yeah, how does a little, you know, by the way, cutest kid ever. Thank little, you. Little, um, little baby. And what means? Like, like do you, you have, have play to dates? network with these people that are his people, not Dude, your people. Dude, everybody in my kid's class, like, all their parents are just, like, finance and the rest of that. Are they so cool? Like, like, do you have a, because, because you're from, you live in a, you know, pretty, very nice, <laughs> nice part of Manhattan. I so, would no, but I'm so, so, <laughs> this is great, like. There's like on every kid's card, like at the school, because it like tells like everybody has their phone number listed. And sure. Do I have a nut allergy? Yeah. Well, not even that. Like it says like what their dad does and what their mom does. And then like, like at the school he's going and mine is just blank. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids are the only Velez you're, in no, the dude, school, you're, too. No, dude, should just say, you're, should just say king of Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> That's who my dad is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, I like it. I like giving my kid opportunities I didn't have. I find that really cool. Like, you, I think do, that's sick. Does your your kid, because, you know, the part of Manhattan you guys are in, does your, when you go on play dates, do any of the other kids, do you have any of, like, those weird parents of other kids that, like, spit their food into their kids' mouths like a bird? No. <laughs> no, 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 you no, live in the no, neighborhood no. where they would be doing that. I think my wife is cool at, like, cycling people that around that would, like, appreciate what I do, appreciate what she does, and, like, how we, like, but live. But it's tough when it's up to the kid, though. But yeah, but my kid's not old enough to pick his friends. Enough. He's three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have, your wife, it's an interesting thing that happens in comedy. I think it's in all forms of entertainment. Maybe this is all walks of life, not, not specific comedy. But I think because of comedy, it's like, sometimes it's like, oh, you know, oh, my friend's a comedian or or my boyfriend or girlfriend's a comedian. And then they just come around and they're like, oh, you're not really working. They're just sitting in the green room. And it's like, hey, I'm trying to get into some, because you think you're just having a good time. And it's like, you think I'm just having a good time and I am having a good time. But it's like, I need to fucking work and I can't talk to you. And Oh, she and does not. She knows how to be. Julie, yeah. your wife. From day one, when it was just his girlfriend, I remember vividly, I remember this, the first time I ever met her was at New York Comedy Club in the green room, which was like a little bullshit green room they used to have. Not even a green room, it was like the <laughs> bar, bar space. And she literally, you said, hey, this is my girlfriend. And I said, hi, nice to meet you. And then I had my notebook out. She goes, hi, nice to meet you. She goes, go back to what you were doing. Like, just like that. She's like, go back to what you were doing. Dude, but it, so nice and assertive. And I was like, I like this one. She, I like this one. She does that. And yeah. she's also like good in the business. Yes, sense she's too. great, like, Julie. Around agents, around producers, yes. directors, and the rest of that. She knows how to like hold it together and do it correctly. And But I mean, like she comes from, her dad's an incredible businessman. So it does, like, it shouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, but like at the same time, like she definitely has that where it's just awesome. It's important to have in any in any career you have. It's important for your spouse to like be supporting you and like pushing you forward and not holding you back. Have you <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> clip it? Those goddamn windows. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'll be doing a seventh show at Zany's because she wanted a fucking couch from Restoration Hardware. <laughs> Have you guys ever witnessed a comic's girlfriend like who's a nightmare? Yeah. Oh my god, there's comics girlfriends that fucking Dude, stink. I had one that his girlfriend was sitting in on the show and heckled me. Oh, uh, dude, yeah. yes. You get that stuff. <laughs> They broke up, right? Yeah. Good. So I'll say who it is. It was say Eric it. Newman's girlfriend. Oh, oh yeah. God. Shout out yeah. Eric Newman. <laughs> <laughs> I've been starting this thing called uh, E-N-E. E-N-E. Eric Newman energy. Excited, <laughs> and, <laughs> excited and nervous. Yeah, excited and nervous. <laughs> In enema. Uh, E-N-E. Dude, I love that the people we've shouted out on this podcast, Eric Newman, Danny, Danny Palmer. Palmer. <laughs> well, come on. Ricky's can... wife. Uh, <laughs> you're shouting people out. It's like, and then also <laughs> Judd Apatow, Machine Gun Kelly, and Pete Davidson. This, this is a banger. This, this is, a is banger. chaos, dude. <laughs> it doesn't. William Shatner's becoming the oldest <laughs> person to go to space. Jeff Bezos has completely lost his mind now. He just wants to throw Shatner. Bro, free. Someone one, is going to die on this one, rocket ship. No, I don't know if this one, and I don't want to like I don't want to put any energy one, out there. Yeah, yeah. But sooner or later it's like you drive long enough sooner or later you're gonna get in a car accident yes my, it's, my dad used to have a saying like that you hang out in a barbershop long enough you get your hair cut good saying oh, interesting. good saying that's another idea for a tattoo that's only 
<laughs> that's, that, that's a saying that's only said in Queens. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, yeah, that, that sounded like he said that with a with a Budweiser in a paper bag. <laughs> he just took a sip and sat on the stoop and was just like, one of these lotto tickets better hit or you can't eat next week. <laughs> yeah, like what's the most Queens moment you ever lived? The most qu- oh. Day before I moved to LA, I moved to LA for eight months. Didn't go well. I remember that it. he had a thro- he had a going away party to go to LA. We all went to it. It was great. You had those. You had like a license. Like remember, like you made like a a card oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like a Jesus license. Christ, I remember dude. that, dude. It was awesome. And then me and Mike, like, ah, oh, so sad. Our friend Rick is leaving. And then you came back like two weeks later. You're like, oh, eight fuck months. It. Give me eight months. It felt like two weeks. We were like, oh, Ricky, dude. Back. I made no money. I was living off savings the whole time. I depleted everything I, I had. I just it, came dude. back because I thought, like, dude, I was at that point pretty comfortable in New York doing spots here, there. Like I got past the Carolines and all that stuff. So I was like, let's go out there and try to sell something. And like, I just had a little bit of savings and it just tore me to pieces. But what, why, why was I talking about that? Queens Molly said, Oh, my most, dude, last day I'm in town. I do my last spots in New York city and I'm headed home. And as I'm headed home, I fall asleep on the F train. Ugh. I was last stop on the F train plus a 20 uh, minute bus to get home. And a guy punched me in the eye as I was sleeping, <laughs> just dead right in the face as I was sleeping on the train. Dude, didn't somebody too at New York Comedy Club throw you through the ticket booth? Yeah, man. <laughs> I've been in a, Somebody I've been, threw Ricky through the ticket yeah, booth. Yeah. <laughs> like shattered the ticket booth. Because you're not, you're, you're not going to talk to me. <laughs> I remember my good Dude. buddy Mike Cannon was on the podcast a couple weeks ago. I remember he just texting me. He goes, I was like, where are you today? He goes, I'm at New York Comic Club. Ricky just got thrown through the <laughs> ticket booth. <laughs> Dude, what? Yeah. Was like, what? Yeah, man. Why did you get thrown through the ticket? Because booth? I have a mouth on me. But I, who threw you through the ticket booth? The customer? It was a comic. It was a comic. Uh, it was uh, like one of the. It was before Emilio owned it. And it was like when Al Martin used to have those goons around. Oh, yeah. And sure. then, like, this guy started mouthing off to me, and I was like, yeah, that's not how that works. And the guy just was like, you don't speak to me like that. I was like, I'll speak to you however I want. Yeah. And this dude picked me up. And threw me through a ticket booth. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. A wooden ticket yeah, booth. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, what goes through your mind as you crack through a booth? I was like, I, 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 was like, I better get my set together. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> this set's going to be harder. It but I've scrapped, of, I've scrapped a few no, times. No, dude, you're comedy. like Eli Manning, dude. You get hit, you just get up. With my like, favorite story, Nathan McIntosh tells. Oh, the redheaded Canadian, Nathan yeah, McIntosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that. I love Nathan that McIntosh. outsourced comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was on stage once at Fat Baby, and I was in a fight in the back of the room, a full fight, and he thought he was bombing the whole time. So he was just screaming louder than he already does. Right. (laughs) And he comes off, and he's like, I fucking bombed. And we're like, nah, dude, I was fighting in the back of the room. Yeah. Yeah, when I was younger, I just had so much anger, man. I, like, had that all built, and I was just, like, not ready to just swallow my ego. Right. That's just been, like, the best thing about the last couple of years about, like, arguing with a guy that's not good at comedy, but, like, just trying to up them. Why? Like, why did it, why was I yeah, doing well, that? Well, that's another thing. When you have children, you start to realize, like, I'm not, I'm only going to get into a physical fight or get physical with someone if literally you my, hit me first, my family first or my kids' life depended on it. Oh, speaking I of, don't want to be sued. Speaking that's of physical fights thing. and hitting. Oh, wow. Here's T.T. Jerry. T.T. Jerry. Like T.T. Jerry. Speaking of the devil. I like. Hi, guys. Hey. 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 Listen, hey. let me ask such you a question, pleasure. Ricky. What, what other podcast a- do you know whose oh. once in a while co-host shows up with tits and a oh. five o'clock shadow? <laughs> 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 And a five o'clock shot. Ain't that some shit? You are adorable. That's the best. TT, what the best? Why do you have I'm, my mail? What are you doing? I was just that's that the was federal no, affairs. No, no, no. That's the neighbors. That's who's not yours. Yeah. Whose mail is that, TT? <laughs> oh God, I'm a criminal. <laughs> TT, whose mail is that? I was in the front porch. I was in the front. Let me see. So that's for Jasmine. I was talking to my therapist, and the delivery man came. What, was a he nice cute? Cutie one too. He, yeah. The delivery man was cute for real. Wow. Yeah, he was kind of cute. Fat what though? He had a big ass belly. I don't you like. You don't that. like that? No. You don't like. But you're not you're into fat guys. Motherfucking football. Uh-huh, look at that. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see what Jasmine Let's got. See. Oh, oh, open now Jasmine this is package? actually a federal offense. Nah, nah, you the one. Oh, but, like hey, phone. you helped him with the crime, so you might be going back. <laughs> is, it? is it a phone? TG goes, is it a phone? If it is, you could sell it. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's clips for a barbell. 
It's oh, a very Staten Island, wow. Staten Island meathead that, thing. That yeah. looks like motherfucking for you. That looks like motherfucking head cubs. No, for <laughs> you. Head cubs Dude, that look, looks like a that and looks dress you up in some leather pants, leather skirt. What do you think it is? A whip. <laughs> I that's know. What it looks like, I know. Right? I see. I see that's barbell like, clips. Look. I see barbell clips. TTC's a cock ring. That's it's for your fucking cock and balls, right? To that shit. Your two nights. <laughs> that, that's why it's two nights. <laughs> look at this. This is my kid's godparent. <laughs> this is. <laughs> oh, 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 oh shit! Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, <laughs> my... call her PO, dude. <laughs> this is You're going back to I prison. You just so. assaulted a white man. <laughs> You assaulted a white man on Staten Island too. You have no shot. You have a fucking concussion. Yeah, well, that guy is a junior out. football. I'm laughing so hard my cheeks out. hurt at this Mine point. Too, this is I crazy. mean, that guy is a junior football because my freaking. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm such hey. a fan. Oh, yeah. look at us playing a game. Okay, stop throwing around the football. You hit me right in the skull. What the fuck was that? An accident. So, Titi, we wanted to know if you know Ricky's uncle. No, yeah, we'll no, bleep we'll that. Maybe yeah. I know him. How hey. long were you on Micah's Island for, TT? Hey, uncle, do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long were you on Riker's Island for? I was on Riker's Island like only for a year. Yeah, you can only stay there for a year, well, right? You can stay there as long as, uh, until you finish your, your court. I thought you have a. Oh, your court. Yeah, until your court. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You but, you, you, if, but if you get under a year, you can stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah say yeah, his yeah. name, but pimp, make sure we bleep this. Have to bleep this. this would be okay. a problem. And if you get a year, you can stay. Uh, no? Uh, the last time I saw a picture of him, dude. How long ago was this? The last. Uh, uh, not too long ago, but the last time I saw a picture of him, he had a motorcycle in his living room. Wow. <laughs> a motorcycle. In his living room. Yeah. Was he doing big time? Like, like. Um, he's done big time in the past. The last time he went for a little bit long. Yeah, he ended up going. Uh, I think he's he a did white it. boy. No, Puerto Rican. Oh, he's Puerto Rican. Yeah, full Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican. Yeah, Velez, V L E Z. You have Puerto Rican. Have Puerto Rican. And have Ricky Irish. Velez. That's his oh, name. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you yeah, think yeah. of that? Maybe, maybe, maybe I bump into him. Who yeah, knows? they said. Um, my, how my, would Ricky Velez do? My in dad's prison? friend was a correction. <laughs> My dad's friend was a correction officer. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you look at him? Would you be like, if Ricky Velez walks in? I won't be thrown by this. Uh, what do you think? No, honestly, give us an honest yeah, opinion. We yeah. want to know what, what happens to me if I go to Rikers. Wow, <laughs> do I have any chance? Because yeah, the whites, you have a chance. The whites you have won't a take me, right? You just got to stand on your own two feet because if not, boy, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, because if he gets down. Man, fresh meat. That's what they say. And fresh cute. meat. I, I hate that she cute. hasn't and blinked since she started talking about this, too. No. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. <laughs> oh, my God. No. But, yeah, man, not, guess, but the uh, way you look, no, no, no but you, for real. These days at Rikers Island, if you don't stand on your own two feet and show that you don't you can scrap, man, yeah. they will chew you up. They were like, hey. Now, would I be able to join the white gang or the Puerto of Ricans? Dwight. Yeah. The Puerto Ricans like wouldn't take me? Boy. Yeah, they would take you too. Oh, you so I get Spanish a choice. Or, yeah, you got a choice. Oh, I thought they just wouldn't you take me because I'm the mixed white up. Dudes and, and the Puerto Ricans. They're, it's not so like a mixed all gang? Mixed. Yeah, they're all mixed together. Okay. Could you do yeah. both? Yeah. Oh, you could, you could be in both gangs? Yeah. I would find yeah. that very uh, troublesome. Oh, no, you can't <laughs> you be in both one. gangs. You got to be either with what? them or you be there. Okay. But you just go all hang out together, okay. but you got to belong to one of them. Okay. Do the transgender people have gangs? Like your own of gang? Course. Yeah, I used to run my own gang. You I ran your own gang? What was your gang called? I don't even know what the hell they were called. We were just gay. We were just gay. That's a gang. That's a gang. We were the we fucking were just gay. bitches. We were the bitches. We were the bitches of the fucking jail. That's what it is. When yeah, you when you when you were running your gang, what does that entail? Like, what's the job description there? What you mean? Uh, like you said, you ran your gang. <laughs> yeah. yeah so I, every time, like every time, one of us had a problems, like with Latin Kings or Bloods, and they all you always used to come to me. Oh. They always used to come because I used to be like the toughest one. I used to be like didn't take no shit for nobody. Mad people had my respect for me. So they all used to come up to me and tell, yo, this motherfucker just crossed the line. He told me suck his dick. Ba ba ba. We're gonna cut him. Ba ba ba. I said, you ain't cutting no motherfucking Dude, I love talking to you somebody ain't that goes ba ba ba. You ain't cutting no motherfucking nobody. body if I don't give you the green motherfucking light. Now, did you give so, people the green light to cut some? Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, oh what it is. <laughs> yeah, TT. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you ever have to push someone out of the gang because they're annoying? 
Um, no, I never pushed nobody because did you ever gay. have to push somebody out of your gang because they weren't gay enough? No, you could be okay. No, no. all right, they're all welcome. Anybody's they're gay under the low, no. but if you motherfucking playing on the down low and you go and try to diss one of my people, you coming out the fucking clock because I'm blowing your ass up oh and I'm letting my. everybody in the prison know what the fuck, how you get down. You are undercover motherfucker. You better fucking come out the closet. Right. Or go to fucking protection, one or the other. So how would you out someone in jail? Huh? How would you out somebody? How would you prove they're gay? I'm, we got evidence where all these motherfuckers, we set them up. I set this motherfucking Muslim dude. I set oh, him up. Yes. I set that Allah motherfucker up. I was not happy up. about that. He was talking so much shit that I set him up. I set uh. him up. At 12 o'clock, I told his people, yo, at 12 o'clock, when all the lights go off, go into the showers and just open the curtain. You gonna you see. were in there with him? I was in there with him, but the motherfucker was blowing me. He wanted to blow me. He didn't want me to blow him. He was on his fucking knees while I was there standing there. They come and open the curtain of fucking wow. Muslim people. Caught and him what happened then? You guys just, just go. <laughs> he was blowing you? Was it? Was <laughs> no. It, he was <laughs> blowing you. He, I so wasn't like, like, let him blow me. But that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> He was already. He wanted to blow you. So when they opened the curtain, they seen what he was doing. And then he got in trouble. But what? He didn't get in trouble. No, but he didn't get in trouble because he fuck up. No, no. (laughs) he got in trouble. He got stabbed. This podcast has taken a turn. But the reason why he got stabbed though is because he was blowing you. No, no, no. The reason why he got stabbed is your daughter's here watching this. No, the reason I set him up was because he was talking mad shit about the transgenders. Right, and meanwhile he he's blowing you. Down, when he fucks around, and he was fucking mad, talking mad shit about us. I would hate to see All what right. you would do to Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. Chappelle. Did you watch the Dave Chappelle special yet? Huh? Did you watch Dave Chappelle? No. You know what we're gonna do, Pimpy? Ready yeah. for this? Only at the Patreon, patreoncom slash Christy Comedy. TT oh, and I are gonna fine. live watch. Dave Chappelle special. We're going to watch right, the special watch about transgender person oh with a transgender person. So, and T.T. Jerry. All right. But let me ask you this. Yeah. What aren't you selling at this point? <laughs> okay. Fuck, Fuck it. it. Sell it off. Sell it off. Jerry. The basement's going to be Airbnb in a month. Sell it off. Tis with a fucking beer. Sell it That's it off. That's what it is. What Getting hell? blown by Muslim guys during Ramadan. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He was supposed to be fasting, but he had to be. Blown Ramadan. I do like all the content that you've been putting out since you've been out. Yeah. Not, not like, I mean, out of jail. Out of jail. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been out. I know. Uh, it, yeah, that's, uh, th- that's not overnight. Not to hide about me. <laughs> yeah. Sexy. Stop with that. He is sexy, right? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> she okay. likes Ricky. He's blushing now. He's blushing. <laughs> TT. Yeah. Now, uh, have we had TT on since... She's been in Florida? No. 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 This, was the, this is the first time now since I, since I came back from Florida. How was your first flight? Oh, my God. That was so amazing. Right? Incredible. You know what I saw TT do, by the way? And what? this is why. It's just a message out there. With like, What I love about TT is she appreciates life, the things that we take for granted, the things that we yeah. get pissed off about. TT just says, you know what? I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be live. I'm happy to be free. And it was a beautiful right. thing that I saw. Do you remember when we were going back to New York from Florida, the person asked you to switch seats with them? Yeah. Remember? Because you were sitting in the aisle next to right. me, but then yeah. he wanted to sit next to his daughter, his little daughter. but she was in the middle seat. Right. So that you had to switch with someone right. and you sit in the middle seat when you had an aisle, which most of us would never do because right. we don't want to sit in the middle because we take flying for granted and you said i'll switch with you in the middle seat because you're like i just want to be on the plane it's a beautiful experience for me to be on the plane i was like wow to be with his daughter so i said why not but most people wouldn't most people say fuck your daughter i'm not sitting in the middle seat so that's so so you sat in the middle seat. i'm kind of upset he's not putting you in first class (laughs) <laughs> well, I felt like I was on first class. That was my first time. Ricky, so her for first me, it was first, first class. <laughs> so, so for me, she didn't if know. it was first class or not, I didn't know where the fuck I was at. Because it was okay. my first time on a plane. Nice. So for what me, was it was crazy? like first class to me. It was. You know, it, was. it was first class it, to it you. It was like first class. TT That's was right. crying. And, and, and on my way back, when I got on the plane, when the guy switched seats with me. Oh, yes. oh. <laughs> oh my I'm God. God. I'll delete that part. God. God. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the hell? Oh, what the fuck? You know fuck? what? I give up. I really give up. You know what? Just play the full parole well, officer conversation. Hey, wait a she minute. She to give a shit. He, that I would have gotten you first class tickets, but Jasmine wanted the carpets ripped up, <laughs> so I couldn't afford it. Listen, I appreciate it so much. That was first class well, to me. Florida did you hit? And I am so grateful. 
I love you, Chris. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Amazing, Pimp, right? Pimp, you guys, Jazz, Chris, you, Vinny. You guys are amazing. Well, you, and you're going to come with us. You're yeah. going to come with us on another trip. I go everywhere. We're going to go back to Florida. You're going to come to California with us. Oh, and my the God. Big one they, in New York. Those people love me in Florida. They, they love Oh, my God. They were going crazy. Yeah. You might get hurt in uh, Miami. My, well, yeah, well, we were going to go to Damn. Miami, but we we just stayed in Fort Lauderdale. But she's going to come with me to West yeah. Palm Beach. Maybe she'll come to Phoenix, too. Palm Beach too. is yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're going to get you. But, TT, and how be, much and longer to your off parole? What I are we? Into next year, I, I believe. Because we got to go to the UK, too. We're going to go international with you. But, uh, UK? Chris, we England. Should. Russia? Russia? Yeah. Let's go to Russia. Yeah. Russia, I will come back yes, from yes. Russia. Vladimir Putin, I'll be fucking you. dead. I'll be fucking dead. No, TT. I know. I, I feel like we haven't Russia. seen you in weeks. I know, right? I haven't. I know seen because you know what? Long. You got sick. You got a little. You. I got a parole visit tomorrow. I think. Oh, we, you do. We should yeah. do a full recap with TT on the Patreon. We'll do a full recap yeah. with TT on the Patreon. All right. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. what we'll do. We'll do a full recap of Patri- with TT at at, pay, uh, at the Patreon. Well, not we'll, today, right? No, we'll do today. Yeah. Today? Why not? You look uh, good. You got the no you got I the don't. goatee. You, I'm you, you got half, your nipples on. Have woman, have men today. That's what we want. <laughs> no, listen, I, look, I feel like a fucking mermaid. What other podcast has a minotaur on? That's what I want. <laughs> it's Halloween. It's we'll Halloween. It. Yeah, who cares? Dude? It's yeah. Halloween. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, who gives a shit? You, you're who going to Halloween as John Cicada. <laughs> so um, when does your special come out, Ricky? October twenty. <laughs> That's what it is. October twenty third. <laughs> October twenty third. I would love if you did a review of it. Oh, sure. How about we do that? First, first Patreon, uh, <laughs> first Patreon. We're gonna do the review of Dave Chappelle. Then, at the last Sunday, the last, um, the last Patreon Friday of October, we'll do a review of Ricky Velez's that special. Would make that comes out nice only, on only on Patreon.com slash Christy Patreon. Jasmine wants new countertops. Okay, you got the deal. You got it. That's what it is. That's what where, it is. where can people see you on the road, Ricky? You got anything I'm, coming up? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm uh, going in, back into writing. And uh, doing things like that. Oh, so great. Uh, all you got to do is yeah. watch the special. special. What time does it come out? It comes out 10 p.m. on HBO. And after that, it will be streaming on HBO Max. That's all you can ask for. And I'll be the nice. guy standing there naked. Oh, we should show TT the photo. Yeah, we show him the photo. Let's naked. pull up the photo look, look, for look, TT. Look, 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 this is Ricky Vallette. This is his cover art for his HBO special. You're going to be there naked? Watch. What, We're he's show he's you. there naked. Look at this. Boom. What do you think of that? Here's That's everything. It's right the name there, of his special. Yeah, you think yeah. that's hot? Oh wow! Yeah. You like that? <laughs> nice. What do you think? Do you mind that? Would his you tan- watch that? Would you click on that? Hell yeah, I watch that. Do you think his? Do you mind? Do you mind that his tan is uneven, or can you get past that? No, 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 no. You don't even pay no mind to that. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Nice. Now, do you, can you now? Do you think he's got a big dick or? A, or? I like that though. You like that cover art, right? Yeah. What do you like about it? Everything. I'll get you this, uh, the poster. Oh, the poster. Signed it and sent it. Why Send you gotta it. get me the poster when you're right here? Oh, oh Jesus oh, yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Oh man, it's gonna be tough getting out of no. this house. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's the thing. Nah, nah, yeah. neah. Every podcast guest you ever yeah, had is that's, chained that's, up in my basement right that's now. Me. I like that, though. <laughs> what are you doing on HBO, though? Uh, uh, stand up comedy. <laughs> that's why uh, we've said it a hundred yeah, times. We're doing no, stand up no. comedy. Okay, okay. No, I thought it was like, probably like a short. Um, um, um. Look at by the way, look at the comment. Just Keith Robinson. Yeah, okay, That's my birthday. What does he say? That's I'm my birthday. Definitely oh, watching. Shut up. Keith, when did you oh, yeah. become okay. nice? Yeah. <laughs> well, at what time did the stroke Why make you a nice different? Yeah, you look, you look, you look kind of bombs. cute there, though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Almost Trip coming with bombs. Why, bombs in there. why the are fuck? you holding on to your shit? You let it go. What the fuck? Yeah, because penis is a microphone. Let it go. We need it for promotion. Let it free. What the hell? Yeah, you can be there like that. Well, that's what the name of the special is. Here's everything. He's saying I'm basically standing No, I made it here's everything. Thing, and people don't know this, but like I have zero stand up on television. Wow. Do you, do you understand? Not I've been touring. I've been touring consistently for six, seven years Not with a... no stand up. Wow. Which is just crazy. So I was just happy to put something out on TV, and this was the best of the best. Right. And just I'm went for it. Well, dude, we're hyped for it. October 23rd. Uh, uh, October 23rd. Yeah. HBO, it's an HBO original, comes out October 23rd, 10 p.m. on I HBO. I love how locked in you are on it. This is She's what in. I needed. She's wow. in. TT's in. I'm in for everything, for anything. Anything, everything, anywhere. Just you're not anytime. doing alcohol. No alcohol, no drugs for TT. That's it. No alcohol, no drugs. Not your high. That's it, baby. Not your high. I'll get high on the guy. 
That's it. Mm -hmm. Just look. That at was it. actually going to be the other name of the special. That's it, that, looking at you <laughs> right high, now. High. Looking at you right now is getting me high. Okay. What? The All fuck? right. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Well, you didn't know my uncle. Yeah. You know me now. <laughs> yeah. That's what it. Before TT cops to yet another crime. Every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Critchy Chaos Podcast. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you for having me, dude. Of course, yeah. thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Follow Pimp. Ricky. Thank watch you, a special. TT, I love you. Thanks for I giving me a concussion with the football. <laughs>